Hi Year 9, welcome back to PSHE and we are on Lesson 4 of your Managing Change topic. As I said last lesson, this is the second part of a two-part lesson all about healthy coping strategies. Things that you can do, things that you can try to help manage your extreme high and low emotions that you are undoubtedly going to be feeling at some points during this strange period of time. So last lesson we talked about different coping strategies that people might try and we looked at a whole range of different strategies and suggested which might work for Logan and the day that he was having. One of the common coping strategies that people have these days is reaching out to other people and using social media and that can be a great thing but it also comes with a few issues um, and it's quite easy for your social media usage to get a bit out of hand or to not be as positive as an experience as you would hope it would be. So what I would like you to do is to sort the bits of information in that table into positive and negative aspects of using social media and being online. So write them into two lists, positives and negatives. Um, and you might want to have a third sort of in-between column for some which could be positive but could also be negative depending on the situation. So pause the video, that activity should take you no longer than about seven minutes and then hit play again. So I'm just really quickly going to run through the benefits and the negatives of using social media. There are a lot more that I'm sure you could have thought of. So I've added a few more into the list as well. So benefits then. You can meet people from around the world. You don't just have to meet people that you see in your local area. It's fun. It's easy. It's quick. You can express yourself. It might give you a bit more confidence to be who you want to be that you might not necessarily do in front of other people. Uh, it gives you time to think about what you want to say. You're not being put on the spot in a conversation with somebody. Um, and there's a lot of positive stuff out there. There's a lot of places you can go to get help, to get support, or even just to get ideas and some inspiration. On the other hand, though, Online is where the vast majority of bullying happens these days. It's the cowardly way of bullying because you don't have to say it to somebody's face. You don't have to see how upset they get by it. It might make you feel excluded in some way. So whilst it's fantastic for putting you in contact with other people, if all of your friends from school are in a group that you're not in or have an app that you don't have or are not allowed to have, it might make you feel like you're not part of that group. It can be really easy to spend a lot of time on social media. I've done it. I'm sure most people that you know have done it. Your parents probably even have at some point. And that means that you might be staying up later and not going to bed, not getting a good sleep routine. People can behave differently online. Whilst it's a positive that you have more time to think about what you want to say um, and you might put forward a slightly different uh, like personality that can be a positive and a negative thing um, you can come across some content which is not necessarily age appropriate or might not be the sort of thing that you want to see so videos or images or um, blog posts it's really easy if you look on the comments of videos on any of the social media sites to see people posting their opinions on things or uh, linking you to various other different websites and spamming the main problem i think though is social media is quite often a place where people want to put themselves across in a particular way they are going to put across the best things about themselves and the best things about their life they're not going to post the 7,000 pictures of them sitting at a desk doing work, which is what they would be doing if they took a picture of everything they do in their life. They are not going to be posting about how they are sitting at home watching Netflix again for the 15th night in a row because they don't have any social plans. People want to put across the best things about their life and make it look like their life is amazing, glamorous, they're full of activities um they can bake like a pro they only ever wear flawless makeup 
And so if you think that that's what people's normal lives are like, you start to compare yourself to that. And when you see your warts and all everyday life, it makes you think that you are not as good as them. You are not as talented as them or whatever it may be. So it can cause jealousy and it can cause you to feel inadequate about yourself. But remember, social media is like advertising for yourself. You're not going to advertise the bad bits. Everybody has bits that they do not put on social media in the same way that you know you have things that you wouldn't put on social media. So bear it in mind when you're looking at content. Your main activity for today then, please, is to write a short letter. And by short, I really do mean short. Two paragraphs to send to one of the companies that runs these social media platforms, to send to Instagram, to send to whichever social media platform you choose. And it needs to have a paragraph on each of these two things. What could be done to improve young people's experience of social media? How can you make it a more positive experience? How can you make it less um, about comparing yourself to everybody and, and less kind of um, isolating some people, make them feel like they, they aren't as good as other people? And a second paragraph about how social media can be used to celebrate people's individuality and their self-expression. Now, this is quite a, di a difficult activity. So I have got some hints for you on the next slide. So what I suggest you do is take a look at the hints, pause the video and then write your short letter. And you need to keep hold of this for the end of this topic, please. So here are some examples of how you might improve it. You could provide some reporting services. So basically, if people see things, content that they don't like or that they find disturbing or upsetting, you could have an easy way for people to report that. Having moderation services, so making sure that people check posts that are posted up, especially by other companies or groups to make sure that it's appropriate. Signposting people to where they can get help if they are maybe looking at a lot of particular pages on a theme and timer alerts to show young people how long they've been online for this, I think would be a really important one for me because it's easy to have been on Instagram for an hour before you even realise it. So having some kind of pop up maybe to show you how long that you've been on Instagram for that day or even if you've spent a long period of time all in a row some kind of timer so that you don't look at Instagram or social media after a certain amount of time, perhaps. So these are some ideas that you can include into your letter. So write your letter. You do not need to submit it to us today, but like I said, you need to keep hold of it. So pause this video. You should spend about 15 minutes writing your letter. And then there are a couple more things I want to tell you at the end. So press play when you're done. Okay, if you've got time, can you please take a look at the mind map that you started right at the beginning of last lesson about your healthy coping strategies, things you can do to help cope with or manage your emotions and add anything that you have now thought of or now seen. And as always in PSHE, I want to make sure that you know where you can go for extra information, extra help. Childline, as always, they're the kind of the go to group of people for anything to do with children and young people. Uh, young Minds is a specific charity who provide help, advice for uh, mental health for younger people. So the people up to about 21 and Samaritans. As well as that, there are a whole range of other places to go. There's a whole range of places that are signposted to you on the school website as well. Or a quick Google search will point you in the direction of a lot of websites and places you can go for help or information. As always, you can also email your teachers. You can email me, your tutors, anyone at school if you want help or if you want a little bit more information. So feel free to check these links out and I will see you next lesson.